colleges in India. SPA Delhi Entrance Exam AIEEE, IIT Kharagpur Entrance Exam IIT JEE, CEPT Ahmedabad Entrance Exam NATA, Sir J J College of Architecture Mumbai Entrance Exam Maharashtra ARCET, IIT Roorkee Entrance Exam IIT JEE. NITs Bhopal, Raipur, Calicut, Trichy, Jaipur, Patna, Hamirpur and Nagpur entrance exam AIEEE and Birla Institute of Technology, Mestra, Ranchi entrance exam AIEEE. So Vikram, we were talking about internships. Now when you are looking at interns, I'm sure a whole lot of uh, interns would want to work, uh, work with you. So what is it that you look for and what is it that you make them do? Um, you know, the first thing that I look for is commitment. Because, um, you know, you would ideally want someone to work with you for the whole cycle of one building, okay. one building project, you know. Um, um, and then uh, what you're looking for is the ability to work hard because there are long hours in architectural work, you know. And, uh, um, you know, you must be capable of working in the night, you know, and uh, spend a lot of time in the office. As well as out. Uh, out on the site yeah. as well. So, you know, and there's a lot of, it's, it's hard work, you know, tedious work. You make drawings and, you know, you, typically if you're working in a studio, you will be um, probably participating in discussions where you're taking design decisions with other team members, you know. You'll be probably have attending meetings with clients to understand their requirements. You will be also having meetings with contractors to understand the problems of construction that's happening on the site. You will be meeting vendors who are supplying products to understand building materials. So, so you have plenty of meetings, you know. And all these meetings have to basically uh, percolate down on one drawing or something. It's like writing an essay, you know. So you have to make a drawing based on various different uh, sets of people who are informing the design process, you know. So would you be the one who would be cataloging or taking, the, taking down the minutes of the meeting and stuff? Well, as an intern or yeah at times yeah. you could have to do that you know yeah. it depends on the size of the office and you know so if it's a very large office then you may not be given very a lot of responsibilities right. but if it's a smaller office then you might end up doing most of the work you know and you know so it's very you need to be responsible you need to work very hard and you need to work long hours you know and in the end you have to need to produce results because everything is time bound so a client has probably wanting to design a building in a limited time and to construct the building in a limited time. So you'll have to, you know, really plan your work and be very methodical in how you go about doing it. So that's what you, you know, are the things that you really look for when you're trying to, you know, recruit. A, you so know. a young, uh, a fresher coming out of architecture school must not expect that people will beat a line to his door saying, mera ghar banao ya mera office banao. No, I mean, you have to go through the mill. Well, so, yes. they may get that option, but they'll probably not be able to do it, you know. Yes, yes. yes. So, And I don't think it's, you know, yes. it's, you know it's fair, uh, to fair to be learning at your client's expense. At the client's expense, you know, because there's so many things you don't learn in college, sure. you know. Huh? So uh, you need uh, to get to see the industry, you need to get to be part of the industry, you need to get to see construction, you need to learn how to do business, you need to learn how to deal with clients. So, you know, to get dirty your hands completely before you are in a position to uh, make a building yourself, you know. So it's a long learning curve. I think after five years of Bachelors of Architecture starts another five years of learning, learning, real, learning. real learning before you can, it's like doctors, you know, you just don't start yes. operating, on, if you're a surgeon, you know, you just start start cutting into people's uh, stomachs, you know, I mean, so, you know, you, you learn through, uh, it's a graded process, you know, so. so. But tell me now, if you, so wh what should a young, fresh uh, architect passing out of college look at? Joining uh, a large architectural firm or somebody who's doing smaller projects, where, where is the learning greater? Uh, I think the smaller firms have an edge over, you know, for the person who's going to learn. Although you could get some big exposure, you know, if you work in a large mm. project or a large firm because they would be handling some interesting projects. But I don't know whether young architects who just graduated would be able to get the nuances yes, and yes. Under, understand, catch everything that's happening in a large project. So if it's a mid-sized firm or a small firm where you have the personal attention of the main architect, 
that's the best you know it's, yeah. it's, you have a guru you know whom you, you can reach out to and ask questions and you know he can tell you in a big firm you can be just lost you know yeah. maybe after a few years you know you can also get that experience you know by joining a large firm and seeing how it works on the other side of the fence you know so say a large say a big shopping mall is being designed all right now how does that happen there are architects who design separate parts of the uh, of the mall or is there a chief architect who designs the uh, whole thing and then lets it out subcontracts it to small, you know portions to other guys how does it work in large projects but well, in a building any kind of building is basically a building in the end so hmm. it's i won't call that a very you know it's an, it may be large in so okay. in size but okay. it's not in terms of a problem it's just one problem it's one building envelope one you know so typically you would have limited amount of consultants engaged in that but if you were to do a, let's say a colony or a township or an airport for instance yeah so you know you have to have a transport plan or you have to yeah. you know when all these projects in a building typically you will work with a structural designer mm -hmm. who will design the structure of the building or a civil engineer you will work with a sanitary plumbing consultant who will do the sanitary plumbing design you will work with an electrical consultant who will do the electrical design you study all these things in architecture but you are not specialized in this so if it is a slightly large project then electrical systems can get very complex so you need to work with them so you have these people and then if it's a large building complex where you have landscaping so you probably have a landscaping architect you know so you know today you have consultants for very many small things which are you know there as right, well right right but uh, four five such consultants are important in one building but if it becomes larger than a building and it becomes a urban project then you have to have urban designers you have to have landscape architects you have to have transport planners you have to have you know various other consultants who would be here. environmental design is very important right. today for example you know so in buildings nowadays you are looking for people who can write you advise you on uh, sustainability and you know uh, how to recycle energy uh, so you sometimes work with environmental designers you know and so at what point do you decide to set up your own firm is it easy to get work i i mean you can decide any time i mean to set up you know technically you are yes you are qualified you're qualified and you yes. have a degree and you know you you are qualified you have to have a license yes you you know you have to apply after doing your bachelor's to council of architecture which is yes. the regulating body right. for our profession in india and they also control the colleges actually the examination yes. system all is controlled by the council so you have to get a degree not a, the not a uh, exam is mandatory isn't it absolutely today? yes so you know um, council of architecture certifies you and makes you a registered architect and then you are authorized to sign you know okay. so your professional degree actually is from council of architecture uh, huh? oh i see uh, so council of architecture is uh, um you know it governs the way the practice is done as well you know but coming back to the question you know that you can start practice any time because you are technically qualified but the point is whether you can take it all and deliver so it may be best that you work for some time yes. then get to yes. know the ropes and then uh, start the practice you know so how are how are architects paid i mean are, are you paid a commission how do you or do oh. you char charge an outright fee how oh, does no, it oh no we work? have we have we have very strict rules uh -huh. which are you know flouted as everything else is flouted most of the time but um, but we have very strict rules by the council of architecture where the fees of different types of buildings are regulated uh huh so you know it's based on the percentage of the value of the building project so it's a small fraction of the, the total the cost total cost of the building you know so that's that's the that's the design cost you know of um, any project you know. so that's how it typically works huh yeah yeah and what is the flip side to this career today I think it's very competitive you know yeah. it's uh, it's way um it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a tough not only for making you know setting up your practice because you have to work a lot you have to learn a lot you know it's also tough once you have set up your practice to keep abreast because you have to always reinvent yourself you know you're constantly trying to be creative so you know you can just die out after you know if you think that you have arrived and you don't yeah. know yeah. you know one you know only one type of design so you need to continuously reinvent yourself you move with the times you know and new materials new, coming yeah. all the time yeah so you you so you are so you are constantly studying all your life which it's, is great yeah which like any other like medicine you know mm. or the way you 
you know you're constantly updating right. yourself you know so that process is always on in architecture you know and and here it's little more because you know you are charged to be creative you know mm. that's your charge you know yes. you know yes. you are you are yes. as a as a as a career architect you know that's the mandate given to you that you know you are you have to come up with a better idea you know with how to make a living room or a drawing room or a kitchen or whatever you know so you are constantly ch challenging you know existing norms and systems you know and existing paradigms and ideas so that makes it tough so you know you have to push yourself all the time you know and with that we wrap up today's show here uh, vikram thank you so thank much you. for thank coming to career cafe and en enlightening all our viewers your years of experience uh, i think would be so valuable to young people now next week on career cafe we we'll look at yet another super career but uh, before that do send us your feedback queries and suggestions at career cafe lstv at gmail.com and uh, before we part let me leave you with one of my favorite quotes life isn't about how high you climb or how fast you run it's about how well you bounce so bye for now and be your best and keep bouncing Thank <laughs> you.